so here's the thing. Uh, we're going to talk about selective focusing. Um, and uh, selective focus is something really cool. You know, it's not rocket science. It's really a very simple technique. However, it's also very powerful, very good at telling a story. Not just, and, and you know, the old song is uh, every picture tells a story, okay? But with selective focus, you can really and truly tell uh, a really nice story. And so let's get into it right, right away. Um, the very first thing is, let's really define what selective focusing is. Okay, with anything, you know what I found in photography? That if you can define what it is that you're talking about, it makes the explanation a lot easier. It makes teaching it a lot easier. So, I went on the internet, and I figured, you know, because you can find everything on the internet t today. And uh, I thought, let me get the definition that's out there on the internet. And the very first one that came up was this one here. It says, selective focus is basically what it sounds like. <laughs> okay? So here's the thing that you have to understand about the internet. It's, first of all, it's really great. But uh, what I have found is this, that there's a lot of information. And it's like 50-50. There's a lot of really good information there. But there's also a lot of misinformation out there. Okay, because what happens with the internet, there's nobody, uh, like at B&H, you know, before I'm allowed to speak here, they want to know, okay, so like, what are your credentials? What, you know, what do you do that we can trust you to tell people things that we know that's not going to make them even worse photographers? You know, you know we, we, we want to help you to become the very best. And uh, quite honestly, I can tell you this, there are people in this room that are, you probably have a more creative mind than I do. The whole trick is this, to learn the techniques to be able to put what's in your mind on paper. That's the whole thing, okay? But otherwise, I bet you I can come up to any one of you and ask you for an idea for a photograph, and you'll probably tell me something really, really amazing, all right? So, so that's what we're here for. Um, and so selective focus. So selective focus really is this. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and this is, was the second part of the definition, which was you select what portion of your image you want to be in focus while blurring out the rest. So, congratulations, we've all been doing selective focusing, all right? But here's what it really is. Okay, and if we go with those definitions, these would fit in. Obviously, I'm focusing on the couple or on the lemon, and everything else goes out of focus. But that's really not what it is. Selective focus is this. It's when there is a correlation between what is in focus and what is out of focus. That's really what selective focus is. In other words, we want to tie the two together. One is going to support the statement of the other. Okay? That's true selective focus. So now when we look at these photographs, it's not really selective focus. We're just focusing. All right. So here's a photograph. Now, by the way, a, you, a lot of the photographs you're going to see are from weddings. Okay? When I was in New Jersey, I had my studio in New Jersey, and about, uh, so it's going to be 17 years, we moved to Florida. In New Jersey, uh, my clients were weddings, portraits. Uh, I had uh, a, a Unilever Brothers in North Bergen, New Jersey. I had uh, Prudential Securities down here in the financial district. Where I live now, uh, it's mostly weddings. Okay, so most of my examples are going to be from weddings. Uh, but this, this would be a typical photograph. And uh, the focus, obviously, is on the young man walking towards the crowd. So this is a regular photograph. Okay, it's nice and everything. It's not selective focus. Select, selective focus brings the attention to your subject only, to your primary subject. But, what happens is there, there's a correlation with the background. So now you, your focus is on the young man, but it's also on everybody has their eyes on him. So you almost have like a little bit of a loop. You focus in on the young man because you're, you're, in, in a photograph, your eyes are attracted to whatever is in focus first. Okay? So what happens is you look at the young man, then you look at the crowd, but your eyes go back to the young man because that's who everybody's paying attention to. So one supports the other. Okay, um, now selective focus can be applied to, really to everything. I have some other examples, but 
it doesn't matter what kind of photography you do, uh, advertising photography, commercial photography, industrial, um, you can apply this technique to everything. Okay, uh, this is a wedding venue that recommends me in Tampa. And uh, this particular wedding, they decided to stick the bride and groom in the corner with a whole bunch of junk in back of them. All right. Now, when I put their book together, I'll crop out the exit sign, the speaker. But it was really tough because no matter where I moved, I had some ob obstruction. When the maid of honor gave her speech, she gave it right underneath the exit sign. I couldn't go to the left because there was a mirror and I was shooting directly into a mirror. And when I moved the other way, I gave uh, the groom a really cool headpiece. Okay? So uh, it, there was just a no-win situation. So you know what? I took the photographs. They're not going to complain about that. I don't like it. But sometimes you do the best that you can uh, with what you're given. However, after I took this photograph, I backed up because I noticed that the girls were holding up their glass. Okay? So this is a perfect example of selective focus. You have in focus a champagne glass. That's where your attention immediately goes to. And then when you look at the background, you see what's happening. One supports the statement of the other. So, so you're really telling a little story. It's not just a photograph of something. You know, it's, it, it's, it's a full explanation. Okay. Then I took a photograph of the two of them with their uh, champagne glasses, another one kissing, and then I noticed that they had their names etched on the glass. So I simply told them to stick the glasses in front of them. So now they become the background. So what do we have? We have a correlation between the glass and the bride and groom. I should have blown out those candles, though. <laughs> You know, one thing about weddings, for anybody here that does weddings, it's, it's pretty quick. Um, and so what I tend to do is um, I tend to use selective focus at a wedding twice at every location. You know, you don't want to overdo it because uh, then people are probably going to ask you, well, how come everything's out of focus and just this is in focus, All right? So when I go to the bride's house, I make sure that I take two photographs using selective focus. If the ceremony's at the church, or, uh, or a location, I make sure I take two photographs there using selective focus. And same thing at the park or the reception. So this way you add that little spice. And, and really that's what selective focus is to me. You know, it's like adding a little bit of spice to the soup. You know, you don't want everybody adding that spice because then it's going to taste horrible. But if you just add just enough and spread it out throughout the day, you're going to have some really interesting photographs. And people will get it, okay, because you have the regular photographs, and then you, you throw two or three of these in there, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, that's, that's so nice. Okay, and that's what we really want from people. All right, at the church, you have the people in the background who are going to receive communion, and you have the host in the front, the chalice, and uh, food that they're going to give out to the poor. There was really a lot more than that, but that was for display. <laughs> yeah, maybe. In Tampa, probably. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Okay, so, um, all right. So, again, I, take, I tend to do this uh, just about everywhere. Uh, I focus on the flowers. You have the bride and groom uh, just kind of playing around in the background. And then just to cover myself, because I know somebody in the family who just isn't artsy will look at that photograph and say, how come the bride and groom are out of focus? You know, I always worry about that, okay? Uh, years ago, this is really funny. Uh, Oh, gosh, I had just started in photography. Uh, we were using film. And uh, uh, I went to this place in New Jersey in Warren County. I don't remember the name of the place. But anyway, and there was this spot where sunlight was coming in through the windows. But the windows had uh, louvers on them. And so it was creating streaks. And, the bri and I had the bride stand there, OK? And, uh, she had streaks on her dress, but it looked so artsy. It looked really cool, you know? Um, and, but I made the mistake of taking all the photographs of the bride with those stripes. You, you know, bright sunlight, shade, bright sunlight, shade. It looked cool, but I made the mistake of taking all the photographs like that. The photographs come back, and what's the first thing that the mother of the bride says to me? Manny, can you retouch those out? No, I can't, I can't retouch those out, you know? And so whenever you do something, always my opinion is always take 
what I call a regular photograph, just in case, for whatever reason, that person doesn't appreciate it or somebody else doesn't, you're covered. So that's what I do here, is, is I'll take my shot using selective focus, and then I took one slightly uh, you know, different, focusing on the bride and groom. You know, I always like to cover myself. OK, now, is this, according to our definition, not the definition before, is this selective focus? OK, it's not. It's a nice photograph. The bride dancing with, the, with her dad, very emotional. Um, I'll tell you what I do normally with a photograph like this, and it doesn't always work because of logistics. But a lot of times, if mom is standing nearby, I will position her in, in the background so that she, so mom is out of focus in the background here. OK, so then you have a correlation. And I'll do that if the groom is dancing with his, uh, with his mother, I'll put dad back there, or a sister, or a brother. Uh, I just did a wet wedding in upstate New York, and uh, I was able to get the bride's sister, brother, mother and father in the background. <laughs> you know, because they're dancing for, for a little while. As long as you know where they, what table that they're at, you can pretty much gather them to, to, together. And I'm going to tell you something. Um, when I talk to brides, to potential brides, um, I explain that to them. I say, you know, you can hire whatever photography you want, but I'm the guy that's going to create for you. I'm the guy that instead of taking this picture, I'm going to do my best. I can't guarantee because of logistics, the way you know, weddings happen. I had a wedding where the, the mother of the bride was in the bathroom. Uh, I'm sorry, the mother of the, yeah, the mother of the bride was in the bathroom when she was dancing with her dad. I can't do it, OK? So, um, so as long as it's possible, I tell them, this is what you're going to get from me, and this is what you'll probably get from somebody else. So select a focus. You can also use it as a selling tool. OK, is this select a focus? OK, this is in uh, uh, South Beach in Miami. It's not. Now, if there was something back there that said Copacabana, or if there were spectators there listening to him, it would be selective focus. But it's really, it's just a nondescript background. You know, it's a nice shot, nondescript. OK, so here's what I do when I do portraits. Now, this is an engagement uh, photograph on the beach. If you live in Florida, a lot of engagement photos are going to be on the beach. OK, so I'll take my regular photographs the way that I like. OK, but then I'll throw in some selective focus. OK, so it's really cool. It's, it's very easy. And, they, and even if they don't pick this as their favorite, I will tell you that you will get so many oohs and ahs. You'll get so many compliments from photographs like this. Does it work from family portraits? Yeah. Uh, now, this is a couple. This was actually their engagement portrait. Uh, uh, all the girls are hers, except for the girl in pink sitting down and, and the young man who are his kids. So they got together. And then the guy in the blue is married into the family. So we took a nice, so I told him, you know, when we do the engagement photograph, if you want to bring your kids, bring them. We'll do a family portrait as well. So we did. And then after that, I took one using selective focus. All right, so the, the focus is on the couple. It's on the couple. That, that's your main subject. But in the background are all their kids. And so it tells that story. It's the couple, but hey, these are our kids. Now, I want, now these are really sweet kids. They really were. I wanted to do a photo bomb <laughs> with this, OK? But they just wouldn't do it. You know, I wanted to do one where they were kissing, and then the kids in the background would all be going like this. Uh, you know, but they wouldn't do it. You know, they were really shy about it, so. OK. Uh, Somebody by me wrote a book, which is now at the graphic artist. They're, they're designing it. So, but I designed this myself just so, so I could show you. And the name of the book is called uh, Walking Barefoot in a Broken Glass World. It's a, it's a Christian-based uh, book on how to go through life and avoid pitfalls. Okay? And so he had an idea. And he said, you know what? You know, because of the title, he said, yeah, I'd like to do something with and this happens to be his, uh, uh, his daughter, uh, something where she's walking 
and she's not paying attention, just like some of us sometimes are not paying attention in life. So, um, so what happens is uh, I used a wide angle lens and we really wanted to get the idea that she was going to step on the glass. She wasn't paying attention to what she was doing. Okay, so how to avoid the pitfalls of life. And we came up with this and he told me that he sent this photograph here to the publisher and the, pub and the publisher really, really loved it. And he said uh, to the author, he, he said, you know, and I also like the way that you tilted the, uh, the photograph. It looks like the sphere. It looks like the world. Okay. Uh, keeping in mind with the, uh, a broken glass world. So um, if you use select to focus, it really is very powerful. It really is powerful in telling that story. Okay. So let's talk about some equipment. What kind of equipment do, do you need to really maximize selective focus? Now, I'm a Canon shooter, okay? Now, for all of those of you who are Nikon shooters, at the end of this, please give me a, a five-minute head start. I don't run as fast as I used to, okay? <laughs> so, um, okay. So basically, here's the thing. You would think that you would need uh, really powerful lenses, 200 to 700, 2.8, got to throw the background really out of focus. You would be surprised, okay? All right, now this photograph here was taken with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, a 2.8 IS, okay, the, the Whopper, okay? Uh, and it was set at 200 millimeter, but I shot it at f4, all right? Here's the thing that you have to be careful with selective focus. You want the, fo the photograph out of focus, but you don't want it so blurry that you can't make out the background. Remember, we're trying to tie the two together, but keeping a, a primary subject and a secondary subject, okay? So, in essence, I didn't need the 2.8 IS. I could have shot it with a 70 to 200 F4, all right? Now, this photograph was taken with a 24-105 F4 IS lens at 24 millimeter. So I'm not even using a, a, the telephoto. And it's taken at f4. Now there's a flash off to the side lighting up the, the flowers. Because the flowers were like easily two and a half stops under. Okay? Um, and you have the bride and groom in the background. So even with a 24 and 105, a wide angle lens, you can do select to focus. The trick in this case here is that I was very close to the flowers. So obviously, there's no depth of field, okay? So everything else goes out of focus. All of these photographs here were taken with a 24-105. You, you know what? That's one of the nicest all-around lenses. It really is. And, and I have to be honest, I like the IS, um, although I love my tripod. I'm like, actually, I'm going to buy another one. I have three tripods at home. I have a super heavy duty. I have an aluminum that's worn out. I bring it to the beach because the, the, the legs are worn out, so I don't care if it gets messed up. And I have a carbon fiber one, which is smaller, the 055 CX by, by Manfrotto. I'm going to Italy this uh, uh, summer I'm gonna, where I'm going to meet David. And uh, I'm going to buy, uh, Manfrotto has this one that's like this big. It's 200 bucks, but it comes with the head on it already. But that's what I want because I want to take some nighttime photographs. And, I can't hand, you know, handhold that. So, but I love my tripod, but you know what? With these new IS lenses or OS or whatever that you have, VR, it's, it's amazing how low of a shutter speed you can use and get a sharp photograph. It's just amazing. Okay, now, is this selective focus? Can I get a hands up for yes? Or, and then I'll get a hands up for no's. Okay, how about no's? Okay, the nose got it, and I, I'm going to tell you why. You can't make out the background. You know, there's no correlation. You can't tie the two together. There's no way to be able to say, okay, oh, I see. That's Mary and, and Joe or whoever it might be, okay? So here's the thing. Again, uh, what's the best f-stop to photograph these at? I'm finding that f4 and f5.6 are really good. Uh, you can go higher, F8, depending. And sometimes you'll need to go to 2.8, but not very often. Because 2.8 is going to throw that background so out of focus that you, you'd 
you don't have any connection to, to, to what's in the background. It's just a one big blur. Yeah. So the one on the left at 2.8, you can't make out their faces. You can't make out, cannot make out their expressions. The 5.6, you can see, look at them. You can see her smile. Even though it's out of focus, you can see that she's smiling, that she's, you know, she, she has that look on her. He's got that look on him. They're getting married, <laughs> OK? OK, whoa, that's a really good photograph of me. That's a selfie, OK? But uh, so, so what's the quickest way that I can explain to do selective focus, OK? This is a regular photograph. You focus in on your primary subject, and then you take your secondary subject and move them four, five, six feet in back. If it's a wide-angle lens, you don't have to go more than five or six feet. You know, like the dog and the couple, that leash was like, that leash had to be tw 20 feet long, 18 feet long. So if you go into a wide angle, you have to push him back a little bit further to, to really get, get him out of focus. OK, so these are the DVDs that, that we sell. Everything from Jumpstart, which is for beginners, real beginners. Intermediate is skilled. Ultimate, if you want to really learn how to use flash both in studio and on location. Manual, autofocus. Uh, point and shoot, obviously you're all way beyond that. So. Uh, posing, and then landscape photography. All of them are sold here at, at b &H. and uh, And uh, I was talking to this young lady here before when I first got here. Um, and you know what? Um, I have to really be honest. b &H is really very unique among, among everybody else. Um, and I don't say this just because I'm here. It really is true. I've been doing photography for 37 years full time. All right, I started out while I was a junior in high school. And here's the thing. Um, I've dealt with other companies, obviously, in the past. Nobody pays more attention to you than the folks here. I mean, that really is the truth. You know, they really make you feel like you're their only customer. Uh, and that is really special. I've dealt with others where, where when I called to place an order, you know, they were busy. They left me. I, I would leave a message. They would get back to me within 15 minutes. And then I'd call back with just a question or some help. In one case, uh, I asked somebody, hey, I know you guys are going to be at the Tampa convention. Can you get me some complimentary tickets? I never heard back from that person. And you know, I have to be honest, that bothers me. Because the way I look at it is, when I go into a store and I buy something, they don't owe me anything. You know, I appreciate that. They do not owe me anything. You know, you know, I'm paying for something. They're giving that to me. The transaction's finished. But you want to know something? It's really nice when somebody takes that extra little effort to say, you know what? It's OK if you don't buy anything today. Don't worry about it. You know, how else can I help you? Do you need some information? Do you need this? Do you need that? I do that with my clients all the time. And I have extremely loyal clients. Uh, I live in Florida. They flew me up last week for a wedding. Since I was going to be here, somebody else found out that I was going to be here. And they called me up. And I'm doing a wedding Saturday. After this, I have a, a portrait session at Yankee Stadium of a guy that he's affiliated with the Yankees, but he's in the minors. Uh, I know nothing about baseball, so I'm not going to describe any more to you, OK? But uh, so you know, when you do that, you, you get loyal clients because people appreciate that. They really do. So uh, I really want to thank the folks here you know, for, for that. Um, I really want to thank everybody for coming here. I really appreciate it. You know, this is New York City. I know you have busy lives. So, so I really appreciate you coming here. Thank you very much. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BNH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.